Hello, everyone. My name is Ariella Wagner. I'm the founder of Sunray Construction Solutions. We help thousands of general contractors, subcontractors, and suppliers secure their lien and bond claim rights. Today, we have the exceptional Lynn Thompson, a brilliant construction lien bond claim law attorney who is going to give us a webinar on what happens after I record my lien. How do I get paid? So, with further ado, I shall introduce the amazing Lynn. Hello, this is Lynn Thompson, and I'm so glad to have y'all all back. Um, here are some instructions on uh, just what will transpire during the course of this webinar. And I'm gonna get, jump in straight to our first slide with the content. Um, this is a very brief refresher. The, the previous webinar was on who has lien rights and how do you assert a lien. And this is just a refresher. Um, this webinar is going to assume that you have a properly filed lien, which means you are in the categories of uh, proper lien claimants. Either you are the prime contractor, a first tier subcontractor, a second tier subcontractor, or a materialman who has provided uh, materials to a contractor or a first tier subcontractor. So, I'm assuming that that would be uh, who the lien claimant would be and that all the particulars of filing the lien have been uh, complied with. Now, this is very important. And this is something you can't wait to make sure is correct when you're ready to file uh, the action to enforce your lien. So in order, you've got to mind your what I call corporate particulars at all times. That means um, you have to have uh, active registration with the Mississippi Secretary of State's office. If you are uh, an entity um, operating in Mississippi and you'd like to be a plaintiff, you must be registered with, registered with the Secretary of State's office and you must be in good standing. That's if you want to have your lawsuit be considered viable. Um, you also, if the work that is the subject of your lien would have required you to have a certificate of responsibility. You must have had the certificate of responsibility that's issued by our State Board of Contractors at the time you entered into the contract or submitted your bid and at the time that you filed your lien. If you're not in compliance with our certificate of responsibility statutes, you're not going to have a viable lien. And the owner and the contractor is going to request a copy of your certificate of responsibility um, if you file a lien. So just be ready for that. Also, and I make this last point based on a very recent Mississippi Supreme Court decision where um, a man who entered into a contract for construction related work in the name of an LLC, but the, his limited liability company had been dissolved, administratively dissolved, but he transacted business in the name of the LLC. When he went to enforce a lien that he had filed by filing a, what I'll get to in a minute, it's known as the lien action, he filed it in the name, in his personal name. And the court held, uh, upheld the dismissal of that lawsuit uh, by the circuit court judge because the individual had never entered into a contract uh, with the uh, contracting party for which, on whose property the lien had been placed. And because the LLC had been dissolved and could not be reformed um, in time to assert a proper lien action, there was no lien right. The lawsuit was dismissed and could not be rebrought. So at all times, even unrelated to lien actions, you've got to maintain, uh, mind your corporate particulars. All right, let's assume that you filed a lien and that, um, it results in payment, or uh, the contractor or subcontractor, whomever, ar arrives at a payment that you're, amount that you're going to accept just to avoid uh, the cost and, and um, you know, being haggled with uh, litigation. If the lien results in uh, satisfaction of the lien or settlement of the lien, you've got to file a cancellation of the lien in the record office of the chancery clerk. And um, if you do not, uh, there's a penalty for that. Um, 
You've got to file the cancellation of lien within 15 days after you've received a written demand for that. Um, and otherwise you're gonna be fined not less than $500 a day. So if you get paid for your lien, be ready to file the uh, notice of cancellation. Let's assume that payment has not been made, that you filed the lien and uh, the owner or the contractor um, are being stubborn and are not going to agree that you're entitled to that money, you're going to have to enforce your lien. And you can only do that one of two ways. Actually, I should say three. Um, you can file a lien action, which is against the owner and the property itself, or a payment action, which is a lawsuit, um, doesn't necessarily attach to the property, but it's a lawsuit to prove um, the amount that is owed to you. And these, these can be combined, uh, but we're gonna focus today on the payment action, um, and the, which is, can be filed in court, or, and this is the third way you can enforce it. In fact, you may have to enforce it this way, and that's by filing a demand for arbitration. Um, if your contractual agreement uh, required you to, to submit to mandatory and binding arbitration, you can't get around that arbitration obligation by filing a lawsuit um, in circuit court or chancery court or wherever. So looking at um, filing the lawsuits, you can file the payment action uh, in county court, circuit court, chancery court, or in arbitration. And you must file the action within a certain period of time after you file the claim of lien. And that's either going to be 180 days within the filing of the, the, of the claim of lien or within 60 days um, if a notice of contest is filed. And we'll get to that in just a second. Now, and I bring this note up also about the list pendants. And what a list pendants is, is it's a, a filing um, in the uh, court's records stating that litigation affects a, a property. So that if someone doesn't go to the land records to look for a lien, they can look in the list pendant record, list pendants records and know that a lawsuit or some proceeding um, is underway that affects a piece of property. And um, last year the Mississippi Supreme Court held that failure to file the notice of list pendants at the same time that the payment action um, is filed will result in the loss of the lien. That is not an option. And a contractor had timely filed a lien, had retained counsel to file a timely payment action, but because the list pendants notice wasn't filed until after the complaint to enforce the lien was filed, Basically, the lien evaporated, so don't, don't, don't get caught in that trap. Now, um, here it is again, you have to file the um, claim of lien, the payment action within 180 days or the lien becomes null. Um, and the owner, um, when you file the lien, um, oh, this is the uh, notice of, of contest of lien. Um, Sometimes owners or whoever is gonna be involved in the lien, they want it adjudicated sooner rather than later. And if they're gonna contest the lien, they've got to give notice of that. They have to file the notice of contest of lien within seven days of um, receipt of the lien. And if that happens, you're gonna to have to act faster to enforce your lien action and payment action rights, because instead of 180 days, you're only going to have 60 days. Now, here's what a notice of contest of lien may look like. This is a form that um, is suggested by the Mississippi lien law. Um, it, it may not look exactly like this. It could be substantially similar, but if you were the, uh, the lien claimant, you need to be on the lookout for receipt of a notice of contest of lien. Now, I mentioned arbitration. Um, arbitration is going to be enforceable. You can file a um, 
a demand for arbitration instead of a uh, payment action, um, I think you would still have to re uh, file the notice of list pendants representing um, that there is an arbitration underway, and that's going to be in the, um, the list pendants records of the, um, of the court because um, you don't want to mess up there and don't, and don't forget that arbitration is a, is a substitute for the payment action, but you still have to comply, or I would recommend complying with the notice of list pendants. Um, and also, typically, um, it would be prudent to file an actual lien action in the appropriate court, the chancery, the circuit, or the county court, noting that an arbitration has, is underway. And then there can be no question, but the um, payment action to enforce your lien, to determine the amount and enforce it, has been timely filed. And the um, action is going to be commenced just the way that any other action, any other complaint is going to be commenced um, and notice given to the defendant or defendants just as in any other action. Um, if there's a reason that the payment action cannot be instituted, you can do the um, lien action, which is against the property itself. And these can be some uh, not complicated, but just some um, circumstances for which further investigation is needed. You just need to understand that there is a difference between a payment action and a lien action. But both should have the notice of list pendants filed. Now, um, who do you have to sue? You do not necessarily have to sue the person with whom your contractual relationship exists. Say, for instance, you are a sub subcontractor and you've not been paid. You do not have to involve the subcontractor with whom you'll have a direct relationship. You could sue only the contractor or the owner. Or if you're the um, material man, you could sue um, you know, the subcontractor, the sub subcontractor, um, or the contractor. So you just need to make sure that you file suit against. Um, all necessary parties, um, which may or may not include the person with whom you have the contractual relationship. But bear in mind that any person up the chain from you will have a right to intervene, okay? Now, this is about the action against the owner to enforce the lien. You can file this uh, action against the property itself, um, but any, um, defense to the amount that's claimed to be owed, all of that is going to have to be litigated. Um, so it, even though you're suing against the property itself, counterclaims can be asserted or other grounds for challenging the lien may be asserted um, by the owner or other parties who intervene. The point of all this is when you file a lien action, make sure that you have all your ducks in a row, make sure your claim is solid, so that the litigation can go as smoothly as possible. Because if you don't know this, the job of every lawyer is to beat the other lawyer. That's why we exist. That's actually just a joke. Okay, now, um, the prevailing party in an action to enforce the lien may award attorney's fees and costs. So if you uh, are successful in pursuing your lien, the court may award you your attorney's fees and costs in that. Similarly, if the lien was invalid or excessive or deemed to have um, not been proper based on some breach of a term of contract, um, then the other party may uh, be determined the prevailing party and they could have their attorney's fees and costs awarded against you. Now, um, all liens have the same priority. So even if you're the first to the courthouse, um, that doesn't mean you get all the money that may be left in the project. But your lien will be uh, have the same priority as all other liens. And what typically happens is there's a pro rata distribution among lien claimants if they successfully pursue what's owed to them in a lien payment action. Now, um, the payment action 
or the lien action is not timely filed, it's going to result in an automatic extinction uh, of the lien. Now, um, this doesn't mean that you um, don't eventually have to file a notice of cancellation of lien. It simply means that um, if you haven't filed your action in a timely manner, that you have no lien. And there doesn't have to be a release or settlement of the lien to result in that. Now, the time in which your lien is going to expire is either 90 days after the if a notice of contest of lien is filed by the owner or the contractor, and you have that 60 days in which to file. Well, if you don't file within that time, um, at 90 days, your lien is gone. And if no contest of lien was filed, and you've got 180 days to file your payment or lien action, then you, uh, if you don't file it within that time, then your, your lien is also gone. Now, the point of this is to let you know that you can't wait until the very end um, to file your lien, or to enforce your, your action. Um, because the, the uh, evaporation of the lien is self-executing, um, you're not going to get notice that it's over. You're not going to get some email saying, oh, your lien is now expired. It's just going to be gone. So it's important at every stage, not just the time requirements for filing a, a timely lien, but the time requirements for pursuing your payment action must be complied with. You've got to calendar these things so that there's no hiccup in your ability to foreclose on the lien. Um, and you sometimes parties engage in negotiation of what might be owed and these quote settlement talks may lead you to believe that you're on the verge of having a resolution if that doesn't happen and all of a sudden you've got to scramble and file a, um, a lawsuit or a demand for arbitration or both you know you just don't want to be caught with your pants down um, you need to have counsel retained they always have to go through conflicts check and they want engagement terms and also they want to get the facts straight um, so filing a lawsuit, um, it's not difficult for lawyers, but they tend to want to have uh, their ducks in a row and they want to know what the facts are before they, before they do that. So mark your calendars um, and be ready so that you can properly take action when the time comes. Ariella? That was absolutely incredible. Um, such a in voluminous amount of information and I think one of the most important things is exactly what you said at the end to all the listeners on this webinar, you do not want to wait until the last minute and you are in extraordinary hands with Lynn. She clearly knows her lien laws inside and out. And at Sunray, we will only work with Lynn in Mississippi because she is the best. So, uh -huh. What's so that you? being said, um, we don't have any questions, but our contact information is here. And um, if you have any questions, or again, if there is a, a particular situation, you know, time is of the essence. So you do not want to wait the, until the last minute to reach out to Lynn to foreclose because your deadlines may be missed. Um, so I think on our next screen, uh, we're going to have our webinars that are coming up, or you can actually just go into the next one. There we go. Um, don't sign that. Uh, don't sign a release unless it says this one thing in June, and then in September, getting paid faster with liens, bonds, and contracts. So we could sign up for our next webinars there, and then that's really it. So again, um, Lynn, thank you so much for such a great webinar, and I, I hope everyone has a sunny day. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you all.